Mark Spencer from Ripple Training here with a quick video tip on how to use the viewfinders in the collection of optics. So here we are in Final Cut Pro 10, and I have this shot here, and I'll play it. And I want to use a camera effect on the shot. In the Titles browser, under Ripple Optics, we have our 14 different collection of optics. I'm going to scroll down. We're going to look at these five here, Video, Viewfinder C, Viewfinder N, Viewfinder S, and the V Shutter Flash. So what we want to do is first decide where we want the picture to be taken. So let's say she looks away, she looks at the camera and smiles. Let's say right there is where we want uh, the picture to happen. What I'm going to do with the playhead there is use the retiming menu to make a hold frame. You can also use the keyboard shortcut Shift H. That creates a hold frame. And let's trim back the regular speed portion of the clip. So now if we play this, we have a nice hold frame. So the next thing to do is to edit in our viewfinder effect. We only need it to go to the point about here, right into the hold frame. So I'm just going to hit O to set a range there. Then I'll select one of these, I'm going to start with the one called Viewfinder S, and I'll show you why in a little bit. So I'll select that one. I'm going to press Q for a Connect Edit. Move the playhead over that and select that title effect. This is what the effect looks like by default. Let's go to the Inspector and see how we can create a little uh, picture effect with it. So. The first thing I think I want to do is, because of this data on the bottom, if we scroll forward to the freeze frame, she's getting a little cut off. So at the top here, I'm going to uh, use the pan controls just to pan the shot up a little bit. I don't want to go too high, but maybe more like that so we can frame it better. You can also zoom uh, the shot as well, but I think it's good right about there. Okay, now the next thing I want to do is animate a couple of things to happen here. Primarily, I want to animate the focus. So I'm going to say that I want her to come into focus at about this point here. And it's easy to change your mind afterwards. But let's say right there is where we want the focus to start. So I'm going to set a keyframe for the blur amount at zero because I want her to be in focus there. I'm going to play it back to the beginning and then set the blur amount uh, all the way up. So now, if we play that through, we can see that she comes into focus. My next step is to add a little shutter effect. So once she comes into focus, I'm going to want to take a picture right about here, right before the hold frame. So what I'm going to do for that is go back to the optics and choose this one called V Shutter Flash, and again press Q to connect it right at that playhead location. If I play through now, we get a picture. Now, it could use a little bit of audio, so let's move the plate forward a little bit where it's starting to take the picture. You can use the shutter sound effect that we've included with optics, or if you go to your uh, music and sound browser and search for the word shutter, you'll see there's a camera shutter in the iLife sound effects if you have those installed. So with that selected, I'll press Q, and that will connect that effect to the same, to the location of the playhead. And now if I play that through, I've got a nice camera effect. Now let's look at a few things that we can modify. I'll select it and go back to the title inspector. There's a couple different blur types. Gaussian gives you a faster render and defocus gives a little bit more of a, kind of a realistic camera focusing. So you might want to use that for a little better realistic look, but it will slow down your performance a bit. Ground glass simulates the ground glass in your viewfinder. You may want to use a little bit of that. We talked a little bit at the zoom and pan controls already. And then the next section is all of these overlays on the screen. So you can turn any of these on or off. I'll just go through and so you can see what does what. See each of those turn on and off. There's a battery in the top right corner, a little hard to see because of her hair there. But uh, we can choose whether the battery is full, two thirds, one third or empty. Let's go back to full. Then for this data on the bottom, you can get rid of it all if you don't want it or add it in. You can change its color to anything you want. 
And then you can choose individual items to include or not. For instance, we're not using a flash here, so I'll turn off some of these flash elements, and I'll turn a few other ones off as well. The focus dot, um, you can make any color that you want. And then the exposure values, you can enable if you want to see them or turn them off. If they're enabled, there's a slider that controls your EV settings. So you can drop that down. You can see the slider moves, and it affects the exposure of the image at the same time. And you can keyframe that to change over time, of course. And you can turn off the optical stabilization. You can turn the bars off and set the number of bars in this pop-up menu. Now, for the text, uh, one thing to know, if yours doesn't look the same, this text is based on a specific font I have installed. We've included a link to this font in the optics download. If I go to the text inspector, you'll see the font that I have selected is called Let's Go Digital. And that's the font you want to use if you want to mimic exactly what you see here. If you use a different font, you'll of course get a different font uh, in your viewer there. Let's go back to Let's Go Digital. To modify uh, any of these text fields, just double click on them. For instance, I can change 250 to 125. My f-stop, maybe I'll change that. And exposures, I'll change that. So quick and easy to go in and modify those. If I go back to the title inspector, the last set of things you can change are adding night vision, and you can change the brightness of the night vision, or you can turn on thermal vision. So those are the basics of working with the three different viewfinder uh, title effects. Now, I want to show you one other thing here. So I'm going to go to my next clip. I'm going to press X. Actually, before I set a range, this clip, I want to take a picture right when the dog's catching uh, this Frisbee here. And by the way, if I hit Command-R, you'll see I've actually sped this up because this is a slow motion uh, clip from iStockPhoto.com, and I've sped it back up to, so it's closer to real time, it's still quite slow. But I want to take the picture, say, right about there. So again, I'm going to hit Shift H, and I've got my hold frame. And again, I'll trim this back. And I want my, my viewfinder to last to about there, so I'll hit O. Back in the Titles browser, this time I'm going to scroll down and select, let's see, Viewfinder N, I'll use that one. So I'll press Q to connect it to the range. Now, this one, Viewfinder N, is based on a Nikon, as opposed to Viewfinder S, which is based on a Sony camera. And Viewfinder N works just like Viewfinder C, which is based on a Canon camera. Uh, Viewfinder N and C both have these autofocus points. And I want to show you how you can uh, keyframe those, select just the ones you want, and have it come into focus. So, for example, here, we really only want a few of these to turn on. And in fact, probably like to line these up. As he jumps up, maybe we want these two to turn on right there. So what I'm going to do first is I'll turn off the grid. I just don't want to see that, but you could choose to have that if you wanted it. And then I'll leave the crosshairs on. I'll leave the circle on. And I'm going to turn off this no card thing in the bottom corner. I'll turn that on so you can see it. Now, I don't want to use all these. I only want to use, say, this couple of focus points there. So you can turn off the ones that you don't want to use. I'm just going to go through here and uncheck the ones I don't want to use. Now for the remaining ones, I don't want them to turn on until the dog's kind of jumped up a little bit there. I want to turn on about there. So what I'm going to do is that's about where I want them to turn on. So I'm going to set a keyframe for their opacity. I'm going to go back one frame by hitting the left arrow key and drag the slider to zero. So now, they turn on right when the dog jumps up, because that's kind of where we've we focused. And what we can do now that they're on, we can have them change color. Many cameras will have those auto focus points turn on and then change color. We'll set a keyframe with them being black. Hit the right arrow key to move forward one frame, and then change that color to red. And now those auto focus points will turn on and turn red right before we take the shot. Let's select our shutter effect and hit Q. Then let's go back, go to the music and sound browser, select our camera shutter and hit Q, and then play that through. And there we go. 
Viewfinder C works pretty much the same way, so I'm going to skip that and instead move to the video camera effect. I'll hit X to mark this last clip of this UFO in the forest, and we want to show that we're capturing it on video. So let's go back to the Titles browser, scroll down, and select the video effect and press Q. The video effect is very straightforward. Uh, we can also choose to blur it for focusing by setting keyframes. We can also adjust the scale and position of the video that's underneath. And then we can turn various elements on and off. There's a frame that we can turn on and off. The corners of the frame, uh, these light areas, we can turn those on and off. There's a battery at the top left corner. We can also adjust the battery level. If the battery level goes all the way down, it turns red to indicate that it's empty. And you can keyframe this to change over time. Let's say it's almost empty and we are in risk of not getting this amazing shot. Then there's some center crosshairs that we can turn off. This uh, REC, we can turn on and off. And the dot blinks by default. So if I play this, you can see the dot blinking. We can turn that off, or we can adjust the speed that the dot blinks. And we can also have the REC blink. So I can both blink and maybe uh, speed that up or slow it down. You'll notice it only goes to about 100 here, but you can drag in this value field to make it as fast or slow as you want. Now, these next parts you really can't see very well because of this dark shot. So I'm going to change this color of the time code and of the stats to white. So we have time code at the bottom left, and we have a bunch of options for changing the time code. If you don't want it to start at zero, right now if we go to the beginning, that time code is going to start. That's actually reading the clip, so it's starting a little higher than that. But you can choose a time code offset here just by dragging in these fields to set the time code to a different initial value. Uh, of course, you can change the font and the size and the color, as we've seen. On the right, we've got three different fields, but they don't have to represent f-stop and gain or anything else. You can, for instance, if we want this to be something else, we could just be, have this be the date. So, for instance, I'll drag this up, and I'll change it to a date. Press Escape. And that can also be any font that you want. You can change that there. So if you don't want one of these to show up, you can just double click it and hit delete to delete the text. And then if you don't want this little plus minus sign, there's a checkbox for that. So these elements are all very flexible. You can put them on the screen anywhere, any color, any font. Then you can turn the audio meters off if you don't want to see them. They're not really appropriate for this shot. If you do want to see them, you can choose how fast they bounce back and forth by increasing or decreasing the loops, and you can change how random they are. They're not going to react to actual sound, but you can kind of fake it. I'm going to turn them off there. Then, just like many of the other optics, we have a TV effect. I'll enable it here, and I'll take the roll way down, and it's got a bunch of settings. I won't play with those right now, but now we have a decent effect just like that with the TV effect. Finally, at the bottom, we have night vision, which could look pretty cool here. Or we have thermal vision, like many of the other optics. And those are the basic processes for using the viewfinders along with the shutter effect in the optics collection.